It's no secret that the Roblox YouTube community has a few bad eggs in some way or another. One of the most publicized has undoubtedly been Twitters. The reasons for why these categories of terrible people are so infamous can also relate to different communities outside Roblox. Having sexual interest among minors has and always will be seen as an incredibly heinous thing. A recent case of this example is the Roblox YouTuber PGHL Films. He announced that he would pursue legal actions against users who have impersonated and created lies about him. And while it is certainly feasible for the person in question to be innocent or guilty considering how both sides of the argument have sown distrustful narratives with the nature of these allegations that can be confirmed to be unfabricated proof, some of these creators won't even have a slim chance of having their careers surviving. Another case is the Roblox YouTuber Natrix or Screamzogs or Natixka or 94 Sight. One personality resulting in becoming a rabbit hole of inappropriate behavior and multiple conflicts between people, he has changed his entire brand multiple times, successfully leaving behind his own torn career for a new one often only being recognized for his past controversies to his voice. But what if a YouTuber you are watching seems like a nobody? No voice, no face, no information about where he lives or even his age. Just a text-to-speech anonymous YouTuber that seemingly has no past or history of being in the internet. What if they used to be an online predator? In the ending days of 2021, a channel by the name Koofy was created and started making Roblox videos. At the beginning, his videos already displayed an experienced YouTuber creating content. By copying a popular style of content at the time and with clear editing skills that mimics popular videos, this fresh and upcoming YouTuber already knew how to efficiently create captivating content already reaching 100,000 subscribers in a month. He started formulating his own unique flair that resonated with his already existing fanbase but was also adaptable to current trends, giving him more room to expand his reach to different audiences. But one of his key selling points was of being a voice to many people's thoughts and opinions regarding certain communities, a form of commentary very popular today. Together with another YouTuber named v 420 they created videos that resonated with many users on the internet. How is it ironic that the person that, that built his whole career around calling other people weird would turn out to be the weirdest one after all. During the recent parts of Koofy's career, he's been on and off from the internet. Kaka noticed this Koofy's long stints of inactivity and while the two had a very close friendship digitally, Koofy has always tried revealing as little information about him as he could, only slightly mentioning that he is German and plays Friday Night Funky and simulator games in Roblox. During Koofy's inactivity, Kaka often collaborated with another YouTuber named Olix, who has ties with an unknown user claiming to have information about Koofy. Olix, Kaka, and the unknown user would talk about Koofy. This unknown user only knows about Koofy's past in a sense but gave them a person that knew the entirety of Koofy's past controversy, maybe even a victim himself. Because as it turns out, Koofy's supposed editing skills and YouTube knowledge didn't just come out of nowhere. He was living a, a double life. If you google the size of a 2 liter pod, its diameter on top would be 17 centimeters and 13 centimeters in height. Coincidentally, that's the age range most online predators would go for, which Koofy used to be one. Under a different name, Kellogg's was a German YouTuber that accumulated over 500,000 subscribers from 2018 to 2021. He mainly created Roblox Bubblegum Simulator and Friday Night Funky videos even being a part of the Roblox Star Creator program. But in August of 2021, Kellogg's was exposed for pedophilia, forcing minors to send naked pictures of themselves to Discord. One instance is that Kellogg's wanted a minor to be shirtless and also revealed that he had a 14-year-old girlfriend, which he would state she was very mature for her age. Kellogg's admitted to these allegations in a video like by Natrix. Happened, happened regarding like the nudes being sent to like all these people and like received. About that, I was just stupid. I didn't know back then. I really didn't. Um, like, I know what's gonna happen. Like, it's awful what was sent. Like, it is, and I wish I hadn't. And I wish I hadn't fucking received any. That's the worst part. I don't know. I was just stupid, Nathan. Like, I really just was. I just didn't care back then. Yeah. So, like, basically, you were just you. You couldn't control your whole level. But what proof does it reveal that Koofy and Kellogg's are the same person? I mean, sure, they are the same ethnicity, played the same games, and had years of YouTube experience. 
but there was really no direct connection between the two that can solidify as them being the same person. Well, from the words of Kaka, he dug deeper. He was able to view Kufi's analytics down to his channel settings, finding his blocked keywords in his comment sections, which did tie the knot between the two. Kufi's blocked words were Kelugis, and among other terms related to his infamous Felix stint as Kelugis. To some degree, can we really disprove Kufi trying to hide his Kelugis past in his own videos? There is no other legitimate reason why behind the Kufi trying to hide any mentions of Kelugis other than the fact that he is Kelugis. After enough evidence was compiled, they were preparing to release it and expose Kufi. But the unknown user that helped them compile information about his past revealed that Kufi was his sort of lifeline, his only glimpse of redemption to say. Because after his channel was terminated, Kofi or Kelugis at that time was just thrown at his darkest moments, close to just ending it all. They were initially hesitant to continue with the expose, but the guilt of not informing the public about Kofi's past actions made them come forward. Just a quick ramble about these online predators that have been getting exposed left and right this year, and possibly even more hiding in their heinous actions have been seen in light of day yet. It's hard to sympathize with their situation. The thought of being responsible for ruining an entire person's career and having the possibility that they would cease to exist is a tough thought. But that is why it is so hard to even sympathize with them. They did it to themselves. They were willing to manipulate and harm innocent people. And the possibility of being able to get away from these consequences is what made me want to make this video. In most cases, text to speech YouTubers or any YouTuber that doesn't feature their face, voice, or any sort of identity, it is pretty difficult to even pinpoint that YouTuber to a specific history. One day, you're watching your favorite YouTuber do their usual business. The next day, they were ratted out as being in an offenders list and weren't even allowed to have internet access because of the potential risks they could pose to people. Or worst case, you fall victim to them. If, for example, a person commits such a crime that the only way for them to live is to become a completely different person, a new identity, new credentials, or in some cases an entirely new face and appearance, but online, it is one of the easiest things to do. Just create a new account and it will be hardly connected to your old identity. Even when you have done the most disgusting acts in one account, all of those actions can be abandoned with a new career separate from it. But it isn't escaping from the past you have committed. As long as there is a slimmer of identification, people can connect the dots. But that leaves out the question on those who haven't dropped any sort of identity. No identity or digital footprint to even start at, just all seamless, innocent actions that can potentially hide something sinister. Look, I understand that it seems like I'm just giving you paranoia and making you stray from your favorite text to speech creators. I mean, how did the unknown user even know that Kofi was Caligus at the first place? Maybe there's some actual connection between the two in the real world, but there seems to be a good point to be made here. Literally all YouTubers, including myself, can do something pretty bad in the current or in the past. But if hypothetically we have committed something undoubtedly terrible, then the parts of our identity we sold to our careers will be included with controversy. Even just having the same interest or having a similar sounding voice can draw on suspicion to our past issues. But with text to speech YouTubers, placing the consequences of their past actions on their new career is near impossible. The only way for someone to validate a person with no voice, no identity, no history with someone that has committed a crime is from someone that has had close contact with them, which would slimmer the chances of that somebody realizing that the person even does YouTube for a living. Nevertheless, the specific channel and all of the evidence that proves that those are the same person. A person that has a history of being in certain lists can just hide their identity and act like a completely different person with no one even knowing it. And with the ever-improving technology of AI-generated voices, these kinds of actions are starting to get harder and harder to enact the consequences they deserve when we're oblivious to these actions in the first place. Meaning that the essence of survival has become worthwhile for these people. No longer a method of redemption, but surviving the payment of grooming tens of innocents of minors and traumatizing them. All for just a lick of pleasure. And these people can get off scot-free with a free get-out-of-jail card. And honestly, I don't think we can stop this kind of case anytime soon. One person get exposed for doing bad things, they can just move on to another case and build everything on scrap. And in unfortunate cases, succeed, survive, and attain everything they wanted while letting go of their past crimes. Almost like a full-on redemption.